So for our number 19, um, we want to take the area bounded between these curves and revolve it about the line y is equal to 1. So I've gone ahead and I've drawn these curves and we can see that the area bounded between them is this section in yellow. Um, so when we take this and we revolve it about the line y is equal to 1, what is going to happen is we're going to end up with these, um, these cylinders that go like this. We take a little section here. Actually, that's going to be a little too crowded, so let me draw that here. Yeah. So we're going to take the difference between these two curves, and we're going to revolve it like so. Um, and so it goes like this, and that forms a cylinder, right? And so think of summing up all these cylinders here from... Um, from 0 all the way out to y is equal to 1 to where it touches it. So, um, and each cylinder here, it works as though it were an infinitely thin sheet of paper that gets wrapped around that line um, y is equal to 1. So, um, when we unwrap it, it's like we get this area here. And now this area is going to be an area as a function of y because we're summing up all these um, all these cylinders, we're summing them up vertically, right? So if I were closer, this would give me a smaller cylinder like this and so on. But what we're doing is we're summing up these cylinders vertically. So we have to find a way to express the area of these cylinders as a function of y. Um, so we can see here that our volume is going to be the sum from 0, y is equal to 0, where it starts all the way out to y is equal to 1, um, of a y dy because this area definitely oops um this area definitely changes as a function of y right as i get uh as i go up on my y-axis the cylinders get smaller and so on um so let's think about how we're going to um express this area in, in terms of y right um the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about the base here this length here because remember that um, that area is equal to base times height, right, of a rectangle. So let's find the base first. And we can see here that this base um, in blue it corresponds to this little section here. Uh, so let's th think about how to calculate the section. Um, so this section in blue is basically, let me maybe put that in a different color, is the length of one because we go from x is equal to 0 all the way out to x is equal to 1, minus wherever it touches this orange curve, right? Minus this little section here. So if I go 1 minus the, the, where it touches that orange curve, it's going to give me that blue little section. The reason that, this, um, that we don't do it the orange curve itself, because the orange curve is measured from 0 all the way out to there. So I have to go 1 minus the height of the orange curve to get that little blue section. So um, let me remove that to not get crowded. So we can see here that the blue section is basically uh, 1 minus the orange curve. Now the orange curve is y is equal to x cubed. However, because we're integrating with respect to, to y, we have to express this in terms of y. So we're going to take the cube root of both sides and then we have x is equal to cube root of y. So y to the one third. Um, these, these equations are equivalent but one is in terms of x and the other in terms of y. So we want the one that's in terms of y. So we go 1 minus um, y cubed, sorry y to the to the one third and that gives us the base. Um, now let's talk about the height. In this case, and let me do that in a different color, maybe like green, the height here, well, that's just going to be um, the, the base of our cylinder, right? And this base here is just a circumference. It's a circumference of a circle. So a circumference of any circle is given by 2 pi r. However, we don't want this in terms of r because we are integrating with respect to x. So let's find a way to express this in terms of x. Um, and we can see here that the radius is goes from 1 all the way out to here. And let's think about what this point is. Well, this point is just wherever I'm at... Um, Let's think, uh, let me give it a random value. Um, maybe we could call this y is equal to one-fourth, right? 
And so we can see here that this green line is going to be 1 minus 1 fourth. Because we measure height from down to up. We don't measure it from 1 all the way down. So to get this green arrow that goes like this, we have to go a full distance of 1 and then minus wherever I'm at on my y-axis, right? Um, so maybe if I were like up here, I would go 1 minus wherever I'm at on my y-axis. So uh, we can see here that the radius is basically just 1 minus y because that y changes, right? Uh, so if I were closer up here, it would be like nearly 1 minus 1, so the radius would be nearly 0. And if I'm down here, it would be like 1 minus, I don't know, 0 0.1, so my radius would be bigger. Um, and so we can see here that the height is going to be 2 pi, and the radius is 1 minus y. Therefore, my area is going to be base times height, so it is um, 2 pi 1 minus y times 1 minus y to the <coughs> one third. And now because we're going to integrate, um, this would be very hard to integrate this expression, so we're going to have to expand it. So I'm going to go 2 pi, and I'm just going to foil this out, right? So this gives me 1 uh, minus y to the 1 third, and then I'm going to do minus y times 1, so minus y, and then minus y times minus y to the 1 third, so that's plus y to the 4 thirds. And there you go. We have now an expression for our area in terms of y. This just means that um, wherever I'm at on my y-axis, this expression is going to give me the area of the cylinder that wraps around it. And now we basically just have to sum these up, right, it's from 0 to 1. So our volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 1. Um, oops. 2 pi goes outside because that's just a constant. And then uh, it's the integral of 1 minus, let's see, 1, y to the 1 third minus y, and then plus y to the 4 thirds, and all of this times dy. Let me just check if my work is all right. Yeah, it is correct. And so now we just integrated. This is just 2 pi times um, y minus, this is going to be y to the 4 thirds times 3 fourths, and then minus y squared over 2, and then plus y uh, to the 7 thirds plus 3 sevenths, and all of this evaluated from 0 to 1. Um, so we don't have to worry about the lower boundary because it goes to 0, we just have to plug in the upper boundary. So that's um, 2 pi times 1 minus 3 fourths uh, minus 1 half plus 3 sevenths. And so when I calculate this and I multiply it by 2 pi, um, let's see when, what I'm going to get. I'm going to get 5 pi over 14. And that's uh, the answer to my volume as I rotate this region about the line um, y is equal to 1. Let me just highlight this. Yeah.